to Turkey. Türkiye'ye hoş geldiniz. Welcome to Turkey. I like Turkey. Once known as Smyrna, is the largest city on the Turkish Aegean coast with a population of three and a half million. Skyscrapers and modern infrastructures have transformed beyond recognition the birthplace of the great Homer. Symbol of Izmir is a 25 meter tall clock tower built in 1901. Behind the clock tower is Izmir's marketplace. Narrow streets, small shops and stalls imperceptibly immerse you in the enchanting atmosphere of the Orient. Nearby is the Jewish neighborhood later called Ascensor because of an elevator built here in the 19th century. On the square of the Republic, a monument to Kemal Atatürk was erected in 1930. Behind it is the most modern business hotel in the city, offering conference halls, gathering and recreation facilities meeting the highest world standards. Here on the seaside street you can drink a coffee and surrender into the hands of one of the numerous fortune tellers who will reveal to you the secrets of your future. Or you might drink a toast in one of the many restaurants. Or spend a lazy hour in the coastal park. Or go for a stroll with a horse-drawn cab. And at night, you should not miss the yacht trip for anything in the world. Besides the local seafood, you will be offered a techno party and traditional dances on board. kilometers from Izmir you can meet face to face the pink flamingo, another symbol of Izmir. In the mountains of western Turkey, not far from the Aegean coast, an ancient mystery poses a challenge to scientists even today. Human footsteps of 17,000 years ago. Visual proof that these lands hide the roots of human history. Bintepe, an infinite field with countless Lydian tombs. The Lydians have long disappeared, but the expression as rich as Croesus is still used today. This was the name of the Lydian king who introduced gold coins and possessed an untold number of them. In Sardis we find the best preserved gymnasium and synagogue from antiquity. But the undisputed jewel of the region is the Temple of Artemis, built in a place where centuries before it people worshipped Sibele, and for centuries afterwards the Virgin Mary. In the northern part of the Aegean region is the world-famous city of Pergamon. As the city hosted the famous Pergamon library containing 200,000 volumes, the ancient Egyptians envied it and banned the export of papyrus. They did not want anyone to surpass their library in Alexandria. This forced the citizens of Pergamon to begin processing animal skins and stand of cane, and so parchment was born.
Kushadasa is one of the centers of water attractions. Each hotel here has several pools. The kitchen offers a wide selection of dishes and skilled chefs are there to prepare all types of local delicacies right in front of the eyes of tourists, such as gyozleme. The beach is of course unique, but care has been taken also those who enjoy an active holiday via gyms and spa salons. Shops selling antiques, jewelry, clothing, pottery and souvenirs satisfy even the most discerning tastes. The selling of a local ice cream Don Durma is a true street performance. Dozens of boats and yachts, day and night, are sailing through the vast expanse of water of the Aegean Sea. Kushadasa is a favorite port for numerous cruise ships as well. These floating cities are an additional attraction for any vacation. The temple in which Artemis was worshipped, called the Temple of Ephesus, was named one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. Unfortunately, only this column has survived to this day. People here revered the image of Artemis as the many-breasted goddess, the patroness of the Amazons. In the museum you can see two sculptures of her and numerous artifacts discovered in the city of Ephesus. Ephesus was known already in the second millennium BC from the texts of the Hittites and was an important center of the Hittite and Mycenaean culture. Today the most impressive ancient building in Ephesus is the ruined city library. It was built in the second century AD and to some extent sheds light on the architectural genius of the ancient world. Ephesus is also a place for pilgrimage tourism. After the ascension of Christ, Apostle John and Mary settled in Ephesus, educating and healing people until the Assumption of Mary. Thousands of people from around the world come here today, hoping that their prayers would be heard by God's Mother. Not far from the House of Virgin Mary, in front of the eyes of the tourists, the world-famous handmade carpets are woven. In antiquity, Miletus was a commercial center and major port, whose economic prosperity was accompanied by a cultural boom. Today especially impressive are the ruins of the ancient theater. Prien gives the most accurate idea of the urban planning of ancient people. Streets, an agora, a theater, a city council, private homes, a synagogue and a temple of Athens built on the order of the Alexander the Great. One of the most impressive temples of Apollo is located in Didim. Bodrum offers luxury hotels and all types of sea adventures. Even the most demanding of tourists are satisfied. The Turkish and foreign elites spend their holidays in Bodrum. If you want to feel like in a romantic movie, this is the right place. The narrow streets and waterside restaurants are the real setting for the start of a love affair or rekindling the spark of a long-lasting relationship. Nightlife in Bodrum offers everything. Or almost everything. Festively lighted shops, family restaurants, after midnight the party has only just begun.
the lovers of a quieter life can watch the sunrise and see for themselves how the fortress of Bodrum comes to life, changing color every minute. The collection of a fortress museum is unique. Night holes. Underwater treasures. Golden weapons. Even a bust of Nefertiti is kept here. Bodrum, the hometown of Herodotus, also boasts the most famous home of the dead, the tomb of Mausolus. Another one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. As the historian Pliny wrote, the mausoleum is a glorification of both rulers and builders. For lovers of art, Bodrum offers works by masterful painters, the most vivid memory of the unforgettable days spent here. To the east of Bodrum is the town of Fethier, with the world-famous Lycian tombs. Rocknish swift temples sheltering the remains of Elysians while their souls were on the way to the afterlife. Dalian is a resort town with a population of 5,000 people and a permanent resident community of Englishmen and Germans. A boat trip among the maze of reeds is an unforgettable experience enhanced by the whimsical facades of Elysian rock tombs. Turtle Beach. So called because of a rare species of a loggerhead sea turtles that come to lay their eggs here. Pamukkale is one of the most recognizable symbols of modern Turkey. Local legend tells of a maiden who cursed her fate of an ugly girl and threw herself from the rocks of Pamukkale. The healing waters, however, transformed her from an ugly duckling into a beautiful swan. The whiteness and shape of a rock stretching for three kilometers turned the landscape into a cotton castle. And these are the remains of the ancient city of Hierapolis, built by the rulers of Pergamon. Of four seas merge peacefully in the land of Homer and Herodotus. Mountains, deserts, and deep rivers are reminiscent of the greatness of Rumi and Suleiman. Turkey. Nature here will fascinate you in all seasons of the year. Troy, the most famous city in human history. Now, hardly anyone believes that the historic battle for Troy was actually a battle for the beautiful Helen. Actually, those who held Troy controlled the access to the rich ore deposits in the Caucasus and the import of wheat from Thrace and Scythia. It is believed that the people who left Troy after its defeat later built Rome. Audrin. Adrianam. Adrianople. The town was founded by the Roman Emperor Hadrian on the site of the ancient Thracian settlement. It is worth seeing the Selimir Mosque and the exhibits at the Archaeological Museum. Istanbul. Tsarigrad. Constantinople. The largest city in Turkey. It is situated on two continents, Europe and Asia and is surrounded by three seas. The 
Iran Bazaar. Here you can find goods you had never even imagined. And that is the Hippodrome. With the Egyptian obelisk. The Serpentine Column from Delphi. And the Column of Constantine. The Blue Mosque. Built in the early 17th century, within seven years only. It is named after the blue tiles which encircle the entire interior space. The wall, inaccessible to tourists, has several pieces of the black stone from Mecca. Saint Sophia, or the Church of the Holy Wisdom, was built in the 6th century in just five years. After the invasion of the Crusaders in the 13th century, the church was looted and desecrated. In the 20th century, Ataturk declared the building a museum. A few steps away from Hagia Sophia and the Blue Mosque is the Sultan's Palace, Topkapı. It was built in the mid-15th century and was a center of the Ottoman Empire for four centuries. In the middle of the courtyard lies the tallest building of the castle, the Tower of Justice, where the Sultan's Council gathered. The new palace called Dolma Bahce was built in just 13 years during the 19th century. Here lived and died Kemal Ataturk. Rumeli Hisar. 10,000 people built this fortress in only four months. The Istanbul Archaeological Museum is the fifth largest in the world. Fragments from the gates of Ishtar Islamic ceramics are only part of the rich collection in which the oldest finds are 7,000 years old. Miniatures Whole Turkey at a glance Or at least its major attractions. There are hundreds of them here. Istanbul is rich in art galleries. In addition to the numerous private showrooms, the city prides on its modern art gallery located near the port. and elite tourism, this is modern Turkey. Exotic experiences are combined with classic pleasures. The fun never ends here. The enjoyment is all-inclusive. Central Turkey passes through one of the world's natural wonders, the salt lake. Because of the salt crystals, it constantly changes color as if it were inhabited by unusual forms of life. Gordion, the capital of ancient Phrygia. It was here that during his conquests, Alexander the Great cut the Gordian knot, proving the ancient prophecy of the arrival of a new world ruler. And this is the tomb of a Phrygian king Midas, known for his greed. It is believed that everything he touched turned to gold. Chetalhuyuk. The first city in human history. It is 10,000 years old. This is the oldest archaeological site in the world. Konya. The dervishes of Rumi are the symbol of Turkey's spiritual world. The mystical dance of a faithful in the tomb of their master drew here millions of people from all continents. There is hardly another place in the world where a similar cult of love and God exists. The experience here is unparalleled. This symbolic tomb is a token of homage to the master. And Rumi's beloved friend, Shams. Madrasa, or in other words, a school. The masterful external decoration rivals the beauty of a relief set out under the dome. The Aladdin Mosque was built in the 13th century in the Syrian style. The internal columns were taken from the ruined Roman temples. 
The museum in Konya offers a rich collection of superbly crafted sarcophagi, completely preserved to this day. This is a home and workshop of a craftsman of wall paintings typical of the region. Cappadocia, the land of beautiful horses. Modern buildings seem to be trying to push ancient sand dwellings to the background. For millions of years, volcanoes, the wind and water sculpted fantastic sand shapes. Through a unique attraction, a balloon flight, you can have the best view of this fantasy of nature. The volcanic rock of Cappadocia is home to numerous underground churches and cities. The oldest underground city dates back to the second millennium BC. Cappadocia is famous with its traditional Anatolian style in pottery. Here you can see the whole process of making a pottery vessel. Many pubs and restaurants are sheltered in the volcanic rock. Folklore from all over Turkey is a specialty of nightlife here. Artists will gladly invite you on the stage and dance floor to see what you learn from them. Cappadocia is multifaceted. Far from the noisy restaurants and car horns, the fans of mystical and spiritual experiences can have an encounter with dervishes. In the original environment of the 13th century, Garvan Sarai, you will experience unforgettable moments touched by a higher world. Jibektash is another place for pilgrimage tourism. Millions of people come here to dip into the atmosphere of another great teacher in immortality, Hajibektash. Hodos in Cappadocia are no less original than the creations of nature. The luxury interior is completed by the superb cuisine and amenities. Ankara. In Turkey's capital city, you can see not only the mausoleum of Ataturk, the ancient fortress and the modern tower, but also the art gallery with its impressive collection of works by classic and contemporary Turkish artists. The Archaeological Museum of Ankara is captivating with its rich exposition of cave paintings, clay figurines, artifacts of the ancient rulers of this land, the Hittites, and their neighbors, the Phrygians. Bogazkoy is the capital of the Hittite Empire. Preserved to these days are the Gate of the Lions, the Underground Tunnel, and the outlines of some of the buildings. Yazilkaya is one of the largest temples in the open air. A procession of gods and goddesses is carved in the rock relief. Sphinx were placed as sentinels of an ancient city in the middle of the second millennium BC by the Hittites. The Hittites were Indo-Europeans. Their language is the most ancient Indo-European language of which written evidence exists. In the mid-second millennium BC, the Hittites united the entire population of Anatolia under their rule. Voila, 
large groups of families. Boutique or park of international chains. Modern or ethnic in style. Hotels in Turkey satisfy even the most discriminating tastes. Obviously, people here for centuries living at the crossroads know how to welcome guests from all parts of the world. Trabzon is a city on the Black Sea coast. In ancient times, it was the most eastern Greek colony. It was founded in the 8th century BC. Having survived centuries of ups and downs, Trabzon today is a modern and prosperous city. The St. Sophia Church is amazing. The landscape of a southern narthex depicts the fall of Adam and Eve. And the fresco above the west entrance, the Apocalypse of John. house with the birthplace of Suleiman I, under whose reign the Ottoman Empire reached its zenith. The Sumela Monastery is one of the oldest Orthodox monasteries in the world. And one of the biggest tourist attractions in Turkey. After conquering the Byzantine Empire, the Ottoman Turks were so impressed by the monastery that they not only preserved it intact, but also gave it a privileged status. Dedicated to the Virgin Mary, the monastery today is once again a place for pilgrimage tourism. Close to the Turkish-Iranian border along the Silk Road, and not far from the mythical Mount Ararat, is the Palace of Ishak Pasha. It was built in the 17th century as a fusion of Ottoman, Georgian, Armenian and Persian architectural styles. In the early 20th century, Russian soldiers wrenched off the huge gates of the palace and carried them to St. Petersburg, where they adorn the front entrance of Hermitage to this day. Echlat. This is the larger Seljuk tomb in the world with an area of 210,000 square kilometers. And with 5,000 tombstones carved in the Ahlad volcanic stone. Some of the monoliths reach a height of 4 meters. Then the city's business card are the white cats with eyes in different colors. The local university is looking for an answer of this cat phenomenon. Stone carvings dated 11,000 years ago are on display in the Museum of Van. And exhibits from the Kingdom of Urartu, 1st millennium BC. In the citadel of Urartu we find countless cuneiform texts telling about a magnificent civilization which had set its mark on for over 300 years. And this Seljuk tomb complements the historical coastal landscape of Van. The Church of the Holy Cross is situated on a small island in the Lake of Van. The Armenian built it in the 10th century. The king personally supervised the construction. Some of the highlights are the high long running dome. The unusual frescoes as all painted in charcoal and indigo. And the stone reliefs covering the facade. of the Aegean, Marmara and Black Seas are welcoming for the most part of the year. Coastal attractions seem to have no end. While the beautiful encounter of land and sea can turn even the biggest skeptic into a poet.
The Arbakir. Founded already in the second millennium BC by the Assyrians, today the Arbakir is a modern city situated in the southeastern Turkey. The fortress which wreaked terror in the past now lies in ruins. And is the place for walks and entertainment. How ironic! The ideas of some of the people killed here thrive on. Evidence that daring human thoughts defeat solid matter. This hotel, a former caravansaray, gives an accurate picture of the place that for centuries has housed those who traveled these lands. With the local black stone used in the construction, the hotel represents a typical example of the historic architecture of the Abakir. Pictures of Eastern themes add to the atmosphere. The Tigris River is nearly 2,000 kilometers long. Since ancient times until today, along the river banks, mankind has created and ruined its civilizations. Only the calm course of the river has remained unchanged in time. The Christian monastery of the Rulumur is close to the Turkish-Syrian border, not far from Emidiyat. It was built in the 5th century and named after Saint Gabriel. Mardin from Aramaic Fortress. In the 3rd century, Syrian Christians sat on the hill below the crumbling Roman citadel. Today in the Rock City you can see an Islamic school turned into a museum. And a special relic, a hair of the beard of Mohammed, preserved in the old mosque. The Museum of Mardin attracts attention with its thousand-year-old exhibits. While silversmiths stamped with old Arab methods for the production of all kinds of jewelry. The Sephra Monastery was founded more than 1,500 years ago. For 800 of them, until the early 20th century, it was the seat of the Syrian Patriarch. The ancestors of the worshippers here were the first Christians. Haram was founded over 4,000 years ago by the Mesopotamians. The name is Shumerian and it means a travel, a caravan. People here claim they are direct descendants of Abraham and that Adam is their forefather. Haran is one of the world's centers of religious tourism. The cone-shaped houses in which people live today are a symbol of this ancient village. Shanle Urfa In the 20th century, Shanle, or dignity, is added to the old name of Urfa. This was done in recognition of the local resistance in the Turkish War of Independence. In the small streets, there are numerous workshops which recreate the enchanting atmosphere of the 1001 Nights. In a typical oriental style, the market offers all kinds of temptations. The evenings under the open sky magnify the sense of irreality of this city. Girl. Fish here are sacred because they are the embers of the pyre on which Abraham ought to have been burned. Saved by God's mercy by turning fire into water. Still believing in this miracle to date, people feed the fish and whisper prayers and wishes. It is believed that Abraham was born in that cave. Two lone Corinthian columns rise above the ruins of an ancient fortress located on a hill by the old town. Get ready for a frill. You see artifacts from Gebekli Tepe dated 12,000 years ago. For a second decade in a row, German scientific expeditions have been digging the rocky terrain of one of the most ancient code centers in human history. The huge stone obelisks that you see are thousands of years older than the pyramids in Egypt. This Roman bridge stands as a forgotten century of the long-vanished empire. The bridge is well preserved and is still in use today. In Adiaman, there are underground cities similar to the ones in Cappadocia. The 
museum in Adiaman exhibits artifacts primarily from the time of the Kingdom Comagena. The burial mound of Antiochus I, ruler of Comagena, is situated in the mountain Namrud, more than 2,000 meters above sea level. The burial mound has a height of 50 and a diameter of 150 meters. The burial mound of the mother and sister of Mitrod, second and of ruler of Comagena, is situated at the foot of the mound of Nemrud. In the Valley of Tiger, there are traces of the ancient Iranian sun coat of Mithras. Above the entrance of a deep cave, also related to the sun worship, there is a depiction of a ruler Antiochus at the hero Hercules. Gaziantep is the largest city in southeastern Turkey. The town has existed since the second millennium BC. The face of a gypsy girl is a hallmark not only of Gaziantep but also of the whole of Turkey. Or a boy. Fragment of a mosaic dedicated to the god Dionysus. This masterpiece is exhibited in the Mosaics Museum among other works of art found in the old city of Zygma. With the latest discoveries in Göbekli Tepe and Çatal Hiyoyuk, Turkey may be called the cradle of civilization. A true global crossroads, her lands store millennia-old memories. Cuneiforms and sphinxes. Citadels and mosaics. Sculptures and ceramics. The history of Anatolian Turkey is the history of the world. Osmania is located on the Silk Road, just 25 kilometers off the Mediterranean coast. The ruins you see belong to the Roman settlement of Castalbala. Karatepe Aslantash. The open air museum is located at the site of the residence of a hated king who ruled in the 7th century BC. The Museum of the Mosaics in Antakya is the second largest in the world of its kind and exhibits an extremely rare composition, Orpheus among animals. Tarsus is a city with a 3,000 year old history. The founder of the city is Perseus. Here, Mark Antony and Cleopatra met for the first time. At the covered market of Tarsus, merchants prepare genuine sorbet after an ancient recipe containing many herbs and spices. St. Paul was born in Tarsus. This church bears his name and was built in the first centuries after Christ. And this place was the home of the Apostle. From the well here springs miraculous water. Locals say that the tomb of the Old Testament prophet Daniel is buried in the foundations of this mosque. was settled over 9,000 years ago, Mersin is a modern city and one of the largest ports on the Mediterranean coast. It has about 300 sunny days in a year. People here have never seen snow. The unusual site of a fortress situated not far from the coast is seemingly amidst the waters of the Mediterranean adds to the water attractions here. Traditions and innovations come together in the hotels here. They offer modern comfort and original national cuisine. In a rocky ravine not far from Mersin, unusual reliefs are carved in. The images glorify once famous but nowadays unknown dead man.
Alanya, also called the Turkish Riviera. The city center is situated on a rock jutting out into the Mediterranean right between two long sandy beaches. The Seljuk castle was built in the 13th century. When Aladin K. Kubat turns Alanya into his winter residence and naval base. The Damotaj cave is extremely old and has numerous colorful stalactites. It is located next to the beach in the city center. Perhaps the most interesting ruins of Annapolis temple are to be found here in Sidè. The Temple of Athens is situated close to the Temple of Apollo. The Museum of Sidè strikes with its rich collection of antique sculptures. Scenes like this are not uncommon here in uh, Spendos. The magnificent amphitheater attracts tourists from around the world and it seems like it unlocks creative inspiration in many of them. Aspendos is the best preserved Roman theater in the world today. It was built in the second century and is big enough for 15,000 people. Next to the Aspendos Ancient Theatre, there is an open-air stage which hosts spectacular performances. Along with history and art, modern Turkey also offers another kind of recreation. The wide fertile plains spread out along the sandy beaches are home to countless cozy hotels with golf courses. Golfers can be assured that the highest class of staff is here. Golfers from all over the world have long since become regular customers because of the high standards of the facilities and services. Perg was founded by the Hittites in the second millennium BC. At one time, Apostle Paul read his first sermons here. The theater of Perg could once accommodate 15,000 people. Beautiful sculptures towered above the stage and the audience hall. Today, some of them can be seen in the Museum of Antalya. Throughout the year, the airport of Antalya, modern and convenient, receives tourists from around the globe. The monument of Ataturk is in Chumhuriyet Square in Antalya. And not far from it is the Gate of Hadrian, the Roman Emperor who turned the city into his winter residence. The mild climate and the hospitality of the people are the reason why more than 100,000 European citizens have in recent years acquired property in the Antalya region. The tourist strategy of Antalya requires that hotels are located outside of a metropolitan area right by the beach. Everything here is all-inclusive. The real attraction of this holiday is the incredible scenery among which there are pools, restaurants, bedrooms. For instance, this hotel is an exact replica of the Topkapu Palace in Istanbul. Nearby, there is a hotel in Kremlin style. A little further, a hotel in the style of Titanic. The fantasy of the host seems to have no end. Every day, there are Turkish or foreign artists who perform a concert in Antalya. For example, just like this Iranian band. The eastern beach of Antalya offers an unusual attraction. Sand figures of favorite film characters. The Museum of Antalya has a rich collection of ancient sculptures, prehistoric artifacts, and the miraculous relics of Saint Nicholas himself. 
Just like in Istanbul here too, you can see Turkey at the palm of one's hand. With dozens of historical, architectural and natural landmarks. The Duden Waterfalls Park is a favorite place for recreation for tourists as well as local residents. The energy of the water and the trees engulfs you and you walk away feeling purified and recharged for a new life. Here the turbulent waters of Duden meet the sea calm. Here the slopes of the majestic Taurus Mountains slowly descend into the Mediterranean Sea. According to Homer, the fearsome Chimera, defeated by the hero Bellerophon, lived nearby. In the same way the stories of Homer impress the ancients, the nightlife of present-day Khmer impresses the flocks of tourists. The hotels in Khmer are all inclusive. The quality is five stars. Classical music is performed live. Spacious rooms. Large swimming pools. Diverse cuisine. Entertainers from exotic countries. And small and cozy nooks scattered around the huge hotel, which looks like an independent city. The weather in Khmer is hot and dry, and the sea is warm. There are various water attractions. One of the most revered figures of Christendom, that is Saint Nicholas, also called the Wonder Worker, was bishop here in Mira in the 3rd century. You see the church in which he served at that time. The famous Lycian rock tombs are to be found here in Mira. Rock burial niche located in the vertical cliffs as a sort of door to the afterlife. The streets of Kash subtly lead us to a small square where yet another Lycian sarcophagus is located under a century old tree. The hotels in Kash are trying to recreate the impression that you're the only one here. The time has stopped. And that your home has always been in this place. The words seem to disappear when you see how nature and history are in apparent unity. For the time, water needs to absorb the memories of people who lived here. Places like these seem to be forgotten by people, but not by God. The Mediterranean coast of Turkey abounds with such small coves. Patera is a hometown of St. Nicholas. They say that the city was founded by Patera, son of Apollo. And this is the reason why in winter Apollo lives on the hill, while in the summer he goes to Delphi. Patera was part of the empire of Alexander the Great. The Egyptians, Syrians, Romans and briefly Emperor Hadrian lived here. This is one of many roadside beaches that offer endless blue sea and endless blue sky for the weary travelers. Leto. The city is named in honor of Leto, the mother of Apollo and Artemis. 
The Temple of Leto was built in the 4th century BC, while the temples of Artemis and Apollo were built later. The ruins of an ancient theater in a monastery from the 7th century are close by. Xanthus has existed since the 2nd millennium BC. 25 centuries ago, when the Persians besieged the city, the locusts chose death over the fate of becoming prisoners. An 11-meter-high stone pillar engraved with Lycian and Greek letters speaks about the struggle and freedom of the people who lived here. This is Turkey, or ever a small part of it, regardless of the fact how you chose to get here, by land, air, or water. Choose your own memory of the nature, history and people of this thousand-year-old and powerful country. Because legends and real stories, gods and real heroes, populate the lands and ages of Turkey. Rediscover it. Rediscover it. Rediscover it.